My name is Cheryl Borman. Along with Steve Greenberg, we represent Kenny Robertson. I'm going to talk a little bit first about my eye because I met all of you a week or two ago and I didn't have a black eye. So I want to assure you that I was not a victim of violence. This was a trip and fall on a very hard tile floor that smooshed my nose, my forehead and my cheek, and then it all managed to settle in my eye. Hopefully, by the time we get together next week, this will be gone. So please pay no attention to it. Please pay attention to me. Thanks. I want to talk a little bit about Mr. Robertson. So Mr. Robertson was born in 1993, and he just turned 30 years old. He was born to two parents. They lived in an area of the city called Dipset. That area of the city is bounded by 71st and Normal and Parnell. So Normal and Parnell are the streets that run north and south. 71st Street on the north and 72nd Street on the south. It's a very small area. His dad lived at 71st and I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. 71st and Normal. And his mom lived at 71st and Parnell. And he went back and forth between the two houses. He went to grade school there. He associates with that neighborhood. It's called Dipset. He has brothers and sisters. He had two brothers, one by the name of Tyrone. Tyrone is Tyrone Jr. His nickname was Ty. You're going to hear that throughout the trial, and you'll understand what it means. He had another brother named Jackie. Jackie Robertson instead of Jackie Robinson, named after Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robertson had a nickname as well. His name was Jack Ball. So when you hear that, you know what that means. He has three sisters. His two brothers, unfortunately, like so many young African-American men, were killed by street violence. His sisters, though, are still alive. He's got his oldest sister, Cynthia. She lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He's got a middle sister. That's Sarah. Sarah Robertson lived in Parkway Gardens, and we're going to talk a lot about Parkway Gardens and what its nickname is and what all of that means, but I want to flag that for you. He's got his youngest sister, Ricky, and she lives in Iowa, a long way from Chicago. The Dipset neighborhood is like so much of the South Side. It is divided by little teeny, sometimes block by block, sometimes two blocks by two blocks, sometimes three blocks by three blocks, but very small, discreet neighborhoods, and they have nicknames. And this goes back a long way. You know, we talk about Pullman and we talk about Roseland, we talk about all of that, and then they divide it into smaller areas. And those areas, they had those names for a very long time. And those names change over time, depending on the culture at the time. You're going to hear a lot about that. Mr. Robertson, I call him Kenny, so please bear with me there. Kenny went to grade school at the local grade school in the Dipset neighborhood, and he met a guy named, ironically, Dip. Dip's real name is Eddie Bass. Eddie Bass, Dip, is Kenny's best friend and has been since they were in grade school together. You'll hear about Dip during this trial. Dip is associated with Dipset because he grew up there along with Kenny. They moved, though. Kenny's folks, his parents, they moved. So he went to high school in a different area, and he got to meet a lot of kids from different groups. So kids that grew up in different neighborhoods, right? They grew up in areas called the Low End, and that's the old Stateway Gardens. You know, all along the expressway there. They're long gone. He met kids from Newtown, met kids from, oh my goodness, the 100s. That's way south. That's down by Roseland. He met kids from STL, where FBG Duck is from. He met kids from everywhere, and he got along with everybody. Then Kenny had some brushes with the law, and you're going to hear a little bit about that. In around 2016, so not too long ago, his sister, Sarah, moved from another area of the south side of Chicago into Parkway Gardens. So Sarah Robertson has lived in Parkway Gardens since 2016. She lives there with their cousin, Kenny's cousin and Sarah's cousin and Ricky's cousin. He's a guy named Stefan. His last name is Sykes. Stefan Sykes and Sarah Robertson live together. They have an apartment at Parkway Gardens. Parkway Gardens has another name, and that name is O-Block. That's the name that everyone has been talking about here. 
Parkway Gardens is also known as O Block. So O Block is, among other things, a location, and we're going to talk a lot about that. Kenny Robertson is a bit of a ladies' man. At least, he likes to think of himself as such. He's probably blushing behind me. You're going to hear from some of Kenny's girlfriends, and you're going to hear of more of Kenny's girlfriends. You're going to hear from a woman named Ashley Wiley. Ashley Wiley and Kenny Robertson were living together in Berwyn in August of 2020. Ashley Wiley is going to be testifying, and I want you to listen to her testimony very carefully. The next woman of Kenny's life you're going to hear from is a woman named Janelle Anderson. Janelle Anderson lives in Parkway Gardens. That's how they met. So Janelle Anderson was actually dating Kenny right around the same time, that crisscross time of August of 2004. So besides Sarah living in Parkway Gardens and Stefan living in Parkway Gardens, now Janelle Anderson is connecting Kenny to Parkway Gardens. There's another young woman. Her name is Dej, D-E-J. Dej is a young woman that Kenny met online. First, he met her at a gas station. They exchanged phone numbers, and Dej, you're going to hear, lives in one of those areas we're going to talk about. She lives in the hundreds, down south on the south side. And lastly, you're going to hear about Kennedy. Kennedy is yet another young lady, and Kenny tried unsuccessfully to date Kennedy but you're going to see some text communications between those two about where they live. With respect to all of those young ladies, all of them will tell you that Kenny is associated, grew up in, and identified as a guy from Dipset, not from O Block. I tell you that because obviously this differs with the government's prosecution. So now we're going to talk about a few other things that differ with the government's prosecution. So we're going to talk about Southside neighborhoods for just a bit. The Dipset area that I described earlier, 71st, 72nd Normal, and Parnell, is not just a neighborhood. It's also a form of rap music. Actually, you're going to hear about this. It actually comes from New York. Back in the early hip-hop slash into rap time, there was a band called The Diplomats. So Dipset was their nickname. And it began sort of the gangster rap era in New York City. That migrated here to Chicago. And so you're going to hear there's a couple different areas of Chicago that are called Dipset. It's also obviously a group of kids. Now, the 1980s is calling and they want to call the government to get their gangs back because gangs aren't what the government wants you to believe. You're going to hear that they're just like, they lost all the heads of the gangs back during federal prosecutions in the 1990s and the 2000s. These days, it's a bunch of kids doing whatever they want to do, and Dipset is no different. Dipset is a rap music situation, a neighborhood, and also some kids just sort of hanging out. That is also true of O Block. That's the next neighborhood we're going to talk about. O Block is a place, like Mr. Mitchell said, it bounds basically, let's see, 66th Street on the south, 63rd Street on the north side. So three blocks there. There's an apartment complex. It's got the Dan Ryan Expressway to the west. And to the east is King Drive. So that's the area of O Block. Lots of people live there. Men, women, children, grandmas, grandpas, a whole bunch of folks. It used to be called Parkway Gardens. Most everybody calls it O Block now. It's become kind of famous. O Block is also used to describe a musical movement the musical movement that was started by King Vaughn and peripherally by Lil Durk. You're going to hear about that too. So that whole movement, that O-Block rap music movement, you'd be amazed I was how big of a deal it's become. You can go and you're going to hear this. You can go to Amazon.com and buy merchandise, O-Block merchandise, sweatshirts, t-shirts, coffee cups. And it's a, a kind of a place where people visit when they are fans of that type of music. That type of music is called drill rap. People also make money off of O Block. You're going to hear about that during this trial. You're going to hear that people post YouTube videos and shows and channels and news programs all over Twitter and Instagram and all of the social media. And they make money off of how many views they can get. And you're going to hear that O Block, the concept of O Block and what's happening at O Block 
is a big seller for the people who want to monetize what's happening at O Block. There's also, of course, a group of kids, sometimes various ages, that get together for lots of different reasons. They're not really a street gang. They're certainly not an enterprise, but they do stupid things. As I think the government said, their witness has done some, witnesses, plural, have done some bad things, they do some bad things. But it isn't an enterprise, as Mr. Mitchell has told you. And I want one more part of this to, well, let me go on. Sometimes the three different O-block meanings, they overlap. Sometimes a guy can be a rap artist and, you know, live in O-block and have done some stupid things. Sometimes a woman can be a rap aficionado, associate herself with O-block and live in O-block, but not be involved with any other activity. Sometimes... You get the point. Sometimes people can do any of those things. And it's important that you know this because it's really important here for Mr. Roberson that you keep those things separated. So when the government lawyers say it's O-Block, you should be thinking to yourself, do you mean Parkway Gardens, the place you live? Do you mean the loosely affiliated group of kids that hang out and do stupid things? Or do you mean the musical rap movement? Which of those things is it? Because they need to be differentiated and you need to hold them to that burden. As an example, like Kenny's sister Sarah is not a member of any sort of, you know, loose affiliation of young men that hang out and do stupid things. She lives in O-Block. She's a resident of O-Block and she's not involved in rap music either. So she's just a resident. Chief Keefe, the fellow that Mr. Mitchell was talking about, that guy, he's a rap star. He no longer lives in O-Block, but he identifies with O-Block because that's where he's from. There's lots of groups like this, the 100s we talked about, south of Rosalind, but I want to talk about one more acronym here that you're going to hear about. That's OTF. OTF means only the family. Only the family is a corporation incorporated in Illinois on June 28th of 2012. It is a musical production company focused on rap. The owner is Dirk Banks, Lil Dirk, the most, the single most famous rapper since Kanye, right? To come out of Chicago. So you're going to hear and see a lot of reference to OTF. And you need to know what that is. It's a corporation incorporated under the state of Illinois in 2012. Now I want to move on to the charges because this is an important thing. This isn't just a murder case, folks. I mean, that's, you know... Hard enough. But this is a murder case where the government has a different kind of burden. They don't just need to prove that Mr. Weekly died by, you know, violence. They need to prove that Mr. Roberson is a member of O-Block and that as a result of his membership in O-Block, he committed this offense to somehow maintain his status in O-Block. You will see no evidence of that. You're going to hear that Mr. Roberson has family in O-Block. We just talked about them. Sarah and Stefan. You're going to hear that Mr. Robertson has a friend who lives in O-Block, and that's Charles Liggins. You're going to hear that Mr. Robertson had sometimes stayed with his sister. It's his second home. Sometimes he stays with his sister instead of going home to Berwyn, where he lived at the time. You need to know that mere presence at O-Block does not make him, and I mean the place, does not make him an O-Block member. This is an issue for the government because they know that Kenny is dipset. The next charge that we talked about, so there's basically two groups of charges. We just talked about the first one. The second one is that defendants herein knowingly used, carried, brandished, and discharged a firearm. That's the remaining counts, and you will hear absolutely no evidence that Kenny Roberson had a weapon with him on August 4th of 2020. I want to talk a little bit about the 1980s calling to get their gang structure back. So we're going to talk about gang signifiers. You're going to hear quite a bit about that. And you're going to see some too. So there is a concept of gang clothing. That is, people wearing clothing with certain logos on it. Something that might say O-Block, right? Or something that might say, oh, I don't know, gangster disciple or whatever the gang is. You also are going to hear about jewelry, earrings, necklaces, rings, and the like. In this case in particular, you're going to hear about necklaces. They call them chains. It's a thing. 
So sometimes those can be signifiers, right? Sometimes hats, the way a hat is worn, can be a signifier. Sometimes color, whatever colors a particular neighborhood or street organization hangs out with can be a signifier. And we're going to hear about hand signals. So I'm going to do my very best to imitate the hand signals that are commonly used for both Dipset to say to somebody, I'm from Dipset, and for somebody to say, I'm from O Block. Okay? So Dipset, by the way, I think I skipped the slide. Can we publish this, Judge? This is government slide number 21. It's Kenny's Instagram account. So you're going to hear a lot about social media. So these guys, you know, Kenny, no different. Young people, they love their social media. I am not a big fan, but, you know, I'm old. So with young people, it's how they communicate with each other. It's especially how people began communicating with each other over the pandemic and before the pandemic. And it's certainly how rappers communicate with each other, right? It's all the various things. So you'll notice that in government slide, well, this was 21. It says Dipset underscore Kenny Mac. That pretty much says it all. So Kenny Mac associates himself with Dipset, that 71st and normal area. Then at the bottom, it says OTF. We are going to find out. And you're going to hear that means only the family. That's a rap thing. Then it says Kenny Mac and then FTG means free the guy. So that's another movement of like young African-American or black kids to have their friends not to be over incarcerated. So free the guy. And he writes, free the guy dipset. 300, 600, O block, 80 face world. And then OTF. What he's doing is he's trying to make the point that he stands for the idea of opposing unlawful incarceration. So the government wants you to believe that a list underneath something that says Dipset Kenny Mac means he somehow belonged to O Block. And it doesn't mean that at all. It's important because that's frankly the best evidence they have. You have it. Now I want to talk about little hand signals here. So the hand signal for O Block is this. Two fingers down in the middle, pinky, and index finger up. You will never see Kenny Mac doing this. The other, dip set, so growing up at 71st Street, is this. Three fingers up, pinky. Third finger, second finger down, first finger up. You will see that during the trial. So what does the government have? And what's the evidence going to show with respect to Mr. Robertson's affiliation with the neighborhood? and whether or not he is associated or affiliated with or belongs to O Block. Well, here's what they did. You know all the social media we're talking about? Here's what they did from the very beginning of this case sometime in late 2020 until last month. They did deep dives on everything that Kenny Mac, Kenny Robertson owned, twittered on, called on, wrote on, tweeted on, insisted on. You got the point. Kenny Robertson owned two phones. They did deep dives on the phone stuff. They pulled voicemails. They pulled texts. They pulled his outgoing, you know, listen to all of that. They pulled up every image that had ever hit the phone. They did a cell phone extraction. They did social media stuff. They did Instagram. They did Facebook. They looked for every account he could possibly have had. They have spent years going through Mr. Robertson's accounts his 20 phones, everything that he's ever touched, looking for any image, pictures of girlfriends they found. They found tens of thousands, literally. Well, maybe not tens of thousands, but thousands of photographs, hundreds of video recordings, audio recordings. They found like massive amounts of material and you're not going to see any of it because it doesn't support the government's theory. What you're going to see is the best evidence they have which is this Instagram front page. They recovered no email message, text, post, tweet, IM, or other writing where Kenny wrote that he's an O-Block gang member. They found no recording or voicemail where Kenny Robertson said he's an O-Block gang member. They found no photo where Kenny Robertson is wearing any O-Block jewelry. They found no photo where Kenny is wearing an O-Block chain. They found no photos of Kenny sporting any O Block logos. They found no photos where Kenny is posing 
with an O block hand signal. They found, I could go on. They found no videos where Kenny is claiming to be an O block gang member. They found no evidence that Kenny ever sold or bought drugs for or from anyone associated with O block. They found no evidence that Kenny ever sold or bought firearms for or on behalf of or from anyone associated with O block. In short, there is no evidence except through innuendo that Kenny is a member of O block. Obviously, Kenny couldn't maintain or increase his status if he wasn't a member of O block. Okay, let's see. Where were we? We were talking about, uh, I finished on Dipset and Kenny Mac. So in this case, you're going to need to look at the whole story and not just bits and pieces of it. And I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the bits and pieces you're going to see and then some of the broader concepts around them, the evidence you're going to hear that contextualizes it, that gives meaning to those little bits and pieces. For instance, there was, the government is going to introduce a call between my client, Mr. Robertson, and a young woman by the name of Lindrea, L-Y-N-D-R-E-A, Dumas, D-O-U-M-A-S. Mr. Robertson, Kenny, is incarcerated at the time, so the thing is recorded. So they're being recorded back and forth, and the government is going to introduce a snippet of it. It's from February 23rd of 2021, and it starts at 8.24 a.m. It begins, it's a clip. It's only 13 12 seconds long, and you'll see a transcript of it. It says Robertson, and then Robertson says Ty. We know now that stands for his brother who died. And then Duma says, exactly, no cap, for real. And then Robertson says, murder getting there, murder getting there, mmm, like tell him murder like five, man. I don't give no, and I'm going to not use the F word, but the next word is the F word. If that's her house, this our block. On Ty, make her, make they, make his ass get the F on. Who is you? Where you from? Get the F off this block, dude. On Ty. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to you right here. And it probably won't make a lot of sense to you when you hear it during the trial because it's just a little snippet of a much longer conversation. The purpose of this, apparently, is to convince you that by saying, by Kenny saying, get off our block, He's somehow implying that he's a member of O-Block, and we're going to play this for you. If you start the tape at 4 minutes and 48 seconds, so about 30 seconds earlier, what you'll hear instead is a conversation about Kenny's sister, Sarah. And Kenny's incarcerated at the time, and so he can't see his sister. He's not living anywhere near his sister, and so he's worried about his sister who's dating some guy who's living in her O-Block apartment with her. And at that time, Mr. Liggins is not incarcerated, so he's talking with Lindria about having Mr. Liggins, having a conversation with the boyfriend who is mistreating his sister. He's trying to protect his sister from the guy, and he's saying, I told Liggins basically, you know, please just tell him to get out of there because he's hurting her. So you're going to hear from the tape, and you're going to contextualize all of that because the little snippet doesn't give you the information you need. There's another. I'm only going to go through a couple of these, and there's more. But I want to talk about it. Remember those two girls. I told you Kenny is a bit of a ladies' man. Those two girls, Dage and Kennedy. Well, there's some texts between them that the government is going to introduce. One of the texts says, you know, O-Block is my second home. And they're going to introduce that in some way to show, you know, affiliation. In fact, what's happening during the text, you'll see the broader one because we have it and we'll introduce it. The broader one explains that the two of them are trying to figure out how to get together. She lives in the 100s down in the Roseland neighborhood and she's saying, I don't want to come up to O-Block. And he's saying, you know, basically, how are we going to do this? I'll get an Uber, etc. They're not talking about affiliation with any sort of gang. They're talking about how to get from one place to another. Remember, I told you to be careful on the difference between a place and a membership. The difference between a rap movement and a place. They're talking about a place there. So be careful when you see evidence 
and you're only getting part of it. Hopefully, we'll remember to give you the rest of it. But I want you to please pay attention to that. The government's other evidence, besides the Dipset Kenny Mac, is going to be some, I think they call them cooperators. And I think the government attorney said they did some bad things. Yeah, they did. The judge has already told you that you are the judges of the credibility of the witnesses, and you can choose to believe all of it, some of it, or none of it. You're going to hear some whoppers from this group, and the reason you're going to hear some whoppers from this group is because they have incentive to not be honest. You're going to hear, I'm not going to go into every little last detail, because frankly, I don't have the time, but you're going to hear from these witnesses that they've gotten paid for their testimony significant amounts of money. They're getting fame from placing themselves in the public. They issue YouTube videos talking about this stuff. They get hits. They make money off of that. One of them wrote a book about it. And maybe most importantly, they have their liberty. They're avoiding jail. So you're going to hear all of that. And then you're going to have to decide to what extent, if at all, you should believe anything that comes out of any of their mouths. We're going to ask you to pay attention to changes in these witnesses' stories. In many of the cases, they came in and had audio-taped conversations with FBI agents and Chicago Police Department officers. And those videotaped conversations are, or audio-taped, rather, are very different from what you're going to hear on the stand. So we want you to pay attention to that and ask yourself, what's the timeline? What's the motivation for the story evolving? And who is it evolving in favor of? The answer is the prosecution, but I'll leave that to you. Just because a witness swears to tell the truth doesn't mean they are going to tell the truth. And we would ask you to pay particular attention to that issue. That's the government's evidence in a nutshell. We believe that at the end of all of this evidence, you're going to see through it, see through the innuendo and the associations and find Mr. Robertson not guilty of all of the five counts. Thank you.